Hey sewing friends, Chelsea here from Sew Simple Home. Today's project is a baby bib. So the first thing that you're going to need to do is grab the pattern. You can get it for free. The link is in the description. It'll take you over to our blog with the photo tutorial and at the end of the post you can grab the pattern. So it's a really quick way to grab it. Next you're going to need your fabric. Now when we're talking about bibs, um, you need to think about the purpose of your bib. Uh, is the child going to be eating in the bib? Is it just for a drooly baby? Um, what, what, what are you going to be using the bib for? So for this uh, pattern that I'm making today, I'm going to use it as a bib for feeding. And so I have a laminated cotton fabric here that I'm going to use. I've had this for several years. In fact, I've made a couple of different baby bibs out of this fun material. So that's going to be my main fabric. The back is just going to be this uh, simple orange material. It's just a cotton fabric. Now if you are going to make a bib for a baby that's drooly, um, you could use a, um, a fabric that has a pile to it, so like um, a towel type fabric. Um, you could maybe use flannel. Um, you could use something really soft um, where you can wipe off the drool and, and whatnot. So um, your materials may vary depending on how you're going to use this pattern. But let's go ahead and get started. Um, the process of actually cutting and sewing will be the same. So we can get rolling here. So for this particular pattern, um, it will be on the fold. The finished pattern will be on the fold. So I'm going to fold my fabric in half here, here. And I have a directional fabric, which means my elephants are all going the same direction. They're not turned or flipped. So that's going to make a difference in um, how I put the fabric on the fabric, or how I put the pattern on my fabric, and how I cut it out. So I just have it on the fold there. I'm using my little um, fabric weights here. Sorry, I have words, I promise. Just not really today. Go around the corner here. So, like I said, you can get this pattern down in the description. You can make your own bib. It's a really quick project. Now let's cut out our lining piece. And like I said in the introduction, the lining can be really anything you want. Um, that's the nice thing about this project because it's just a really easy bib. We're going to just cut out a chunk of material here. Because this is um, such a small project with the amount of fabric, you can make several bibs very, very quickly. And like I said, you could use a terry cloth, um, which is the material used for making towels, if you wanted to make this bib for a child that spit up a, a lot or was really drooly. My now almost seven year old um, was always super drooly. Like he had so much drool. Um, and my mom was always like, he needs a bib. I didn't always have him wear a bib because he was just drooly and that was just part of life, right? But all right, so I've got my regular fabric here. So this is going to be my lining and this is going to be my main piece. Now I'm going to go ahead and press these just to get out some of the creases here. Um, when you're working with laminated cotton like this one, make sure the shiny side is down so that you don't accidentally melt the lamination on the front because that would not be good. The whole point of the laminated cotton is that it's waterproof, right? That it, you can wipe it off. 
Um, and you can't always find laminated cottons. Sometimes it's really hard to find them. You can actually laminate your own. Um, you can get like a clear vinyl material that can go over your fabric and so you can make your own laminated cottons if you wanted to uh, go that route. That was something of interest to you. If you found some really cute fabric you wanted to use, that's an option as well. All right, so I have my main fabric and my lining fabric. So I'm going to put them together, right sides together here. And then I'm just going to take a couple of pins oops, and just pin the two layers together. Uh, when working with laminated cottons, they will show your pin marks if you're not careful. So if you have... Um, if you have clips, sewing clips, you know that's another option as well to make sure you don't have any issues. Okay, so my two layers are together. Now I'm going to stitch my layers around my layers. So I'm going to leave an opening at the bottom and you can mark that with pins. I'm just going to remember, but I'll stitch all the way around at a quarter of an inch and end right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and put it in my machine forward and back stitch and then I'll just continue around the bib at a quarter of an inch. Alright, we are all sewn up. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do some clipping. And so what that means is I'm going to go around these uh, rounded edges and every inch, inch and a half, I am going to clip to my threads but not through them. And I want to do this because when it comes to rounded edges, they don't lay flat very well on their own because they're round, right? And we've just sewn basically a straight stitch through these rounded edges. And so they just won't sit flat if we turn this right side out on its own. And it gets kind of frustrating. It's almost as though the fabric is pulling on itself. And that's totally normal. That's what it would, uh, that's the reaction you'll always get. But if we clip around these rounded edges, it helps those stitches to kind of release the fabric a little bit. And it helps everything to lay nice and flat. So we're basically just clipping around this entire bib here. All right, so we're gonna turn it right side out, just through the hole here. And I usually try and come up to the very top of the bib up here and pull the material through and then come to the opposite side weave my finger all the way through to the top and then pull it through. Now we only did two layers for this bib. If you wanted to be a little bit stiffer you could most definitely put a layer of interfacing inside um, that would give it a little bit more stability. It wouldn't be as um, malleable. It'd be just a little bit more um, stable, if you will. Uh, but that's definitely another option. Um, we are going to put a little bit of Velcro hook and loop tape on this. And uh, that will if you had a little bit of interfacing on that, that would help it to last a little bit longer so it doesn't pull through the fabric or rip the fabric at all. Now you can see I have this little, this is a little paintbrush that I have and I'm using that to kind of push um, the rounded edges of the bib out and you can just kind of see it helps keep that or start keeping that shape. So I'm going to turn this bib over and I'm going to press it. And as I'm pressing, I'm going to try and make sure I keep all these rounded edges flat. 
but you can kind of see it see the little puckers and stuff again that's part of that fabric just pulling because it's a rounded edge and that rounded edge just doesn't want to do what you want it wants to do what it wants it's round it's supposed to stay round right and so when we clip it it just kind of helps prevent some of that and so I'm just using my paintbrush and pushing kind of as I iron here. And if you need to, if you feel like your puckers are just too much puckery, then you most definitely could go in, flip it uh, right side out again, and uh, fix those rounded edges a little bit more. Add a, a few more clips, try and get them to... Um, not pucker so much and that would be just fine just helps that bib lay flat now at the opening here I'm just going to turn the material so that the raw edges are in the inside and I'm gonna press it because when we stitch it all together that's what we're gonna want those raw edges on the inside I'm still trying to get some of these wrinkles out of this here <laughs> okay super cute and then we'll overlap it here with some velcro here in just a sec so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to top stitch and the top stitching is going to go all the way around it's what's going to close this um this opening here at the bottom now you don't necessarily need to top stitch the entire bib. If you'd rather not, you could just um, go along this opening and close it off. You could hand stitch the opening closed if you prefer. If you'd rather not take the time to top stitch. But since most bibs are used often, top stitching is a great way to add a little bit more stability keep that bib from unraveling or falling apart with as much washing and drying and wiping that you're going to be doing. So I'm just going around here with my little top stitch. One thing you do have to be careful of when you're working with laminated fabric is that it does tend to get caught in your machine a little bit more. So sometimes it's good to use a walking foot with that so that you don't end up having um, extra little pleats or puckers in, in your fabric. So I'm just going to take my little iron here. Press it on the wrong side. If you want to press on the front, you can. You just want to press through uh, a material, again, so you don't end up um, melting your fabric. All right, our next job is to add a little bit of Velcro. Alright, next we're going to add our Velcro. And you just need about an inch of Velcro, probably not even that, you could probably even use less. If you'd rather use um, a button or a snap, you for sure could do that, but we're just going to use a little bit of Velcro because it's easier. Now I'm going to put the hook side, which is kind of the rough side, um, on the top and I'm going to do the soft side on the bottom. Now my reasoning behind that is this, the hook side is a lot rougher so I don't really want it to touch the skin and typically this is the side that would touch the skin more. So at least in my brain. So I'm just going to pin my Velcro one side out on the wrong side of the fabric and then the other side's on the right side over here. And we're just going to do a little box stitch. 
So I'm putting it in my machine. I'm going forward, turn, down, turn. So I'm ultimately sewing a box around this Velcro. And then I usually will do one, at least one diagonal. And you can kind of see that on the back here. So I have my box sewn. Here's my box and then my diagonal piece here. And that just uh, adds a little bit, again, more stability. Okay, and then my other piece here, up and off, same thing. Just a little box stitch. This one's gonna be a little bit harder because I'm sewing the, the um, laminated cottons on the bottom and it doesn't feed as easily through the machine. So I might have to push it through slightly just to make sure that everybody moves through the machine as they're supposed to. There's my bib. I've got my Velcro on one side and the other clips. This goes around the neck. Um, I would say that this bib is made for probably 3 to 12 months. Um, you probably wouldn't want to use it after that because you're going to maybe need a little bit more shoulder space. But it's super simple. It's very cute. 